The five star plan is out in print and we have the author Robert West here to talk about how we're going to retake the GOP for conservatism. It's time for some straight talk, Rockwall County. I'm Bunker Bob Steinhagen and this is The Bunker Bob Show. Well, and welcome back to another edition of the Bunker Bob Show, and I am thrilled to have with me today a a great patriot, great American, and that, of course, is Robert West, and Robert West is the author of uh, the Five Star Plan, something that, uh, that, that... viewers of this show should be very familiar with because we've talked a little bit about uh, about this. I've had Robert West on the show before to talk specifically about it. And, and at that time, uh, it, it was just a kind of kind of something that you have been working on and, and, and moving toward. But now it's a it's an actual book. So, uh, Robert, it is great to have you back on the show. Great to be back. I'm still getting used to having a book out. So. <laughs> How long did it take you to write the book, first of all? Uh, a couple of months, actually. Uh, we went to a rally, an Open Up Texas rally. Uh, Sid Miller, uh, Alan West, a few other people spoke at the, at the rally. There was a couple hundred of us. And we kept getting this question, well, what, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And we've gotten that wherever we went, from elected officials, from voters, from just everyday people. What is it that I can do to, to accomplish this? And my wife goes, you know, you get that wherever you go. You should write a book. So, <laughs> and she is so happy I wrote it because she's been listening to this for 30 years. So, <laughs> so this is not a new theory, obviously. No, not at all. And, uh, and, and, and so this is the book, The Five Star Plan. And, uh, and, and, and basically it is, you know, when, when, for people who don't like to read, maybe you, because you, you, the, the, the words are too small, which, it, which my, my mother-in-law is constantly saying, I, you know, the words are just too small. Well, the, you've helped a lot of people by making this an easy read as far as, as, uh, as, as being able to, the print size, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah well, you look at your market. It's not a lot of young conservatives. I'm the young conservative in the room a lot of times when I go there. <laughs> the, the, the definition is actually is conservatives between 18 and 40 are part of the young conservative movement. To me, that's just conservatives. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. They say, why do we have a kiddie table for people who are 40 years old? I hate that. (laughs) So it's, we put the print in larger because a lot of the leadership in the GOP, well, let's face it, we we wear glasses and and we're both voracious readers. So we we know what we're doing when we're writing a book Hmm. as far as what we want to see. I'm just happy that no one has asked for their money back yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was you know, always a great fear. That is a good thing. And the reviews have really blown me away. When when Bob Hall wrote his review, mm-hmm. uh, it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. I'm like, either he's losing it or I actually did something pretty good. And it was so nice that I, I called him up and we asked him, can, can we use it for the forward? Hmm. And he said, well, of course. And I'm like. Okay, it's the forward of the book. Hmm. Wow, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I, I mean, Senator Hall is is you know it's it's hard to identify conservatives in the Senate, state Senate anymore, and it's even harder in the House. Uh, but man, we've got a great senator in, in, yes. in Bob Hall, don't we? Excellent. Well, it, that that's a huge feather in your cap to have uh, him do the forward. He's also written a review of it, and and uh, that is on uh, the Five Star Plan dot org. Is that? Uh, dot com dot, dot com five star plan dot com and 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 that is obviously something that you can pick up uh, and and you can get this this in print but let's just talk a little bit about what this book does because this is as we kind of had a little debrief before uh, we came on the air and one of the things that we uh, that I talked about and what I like about it is this is not um, a book on philosophy this is an actual book that gets people, it's a very practical book, gets people out and helps them to understand how they can make a difference. Tell us a little bit about what that, how to do that. Well, one of the things you can do is uh, you can learn civics 101, which we don't teach anymore. <laughs> That's and, true. and next year I've been invited to go into classrooms in high schools hmm. and share the nuts and bolts of how our government works mm-hmm. and what these bill of rights mean. Hmm. 
and and we've touched on that in a previous show. Yeah. But it's people don't realize how important the Constitution is to protecting our rights, no matter who sits in that chair. So we we've, we've spoken about the the executive overreach at, at in the White House. Yes. And everybody gets upset about it. You talk about the executive overreach at the governor's mansion, people aren't nearly as concerned. <laughs> They're not as, yeah, not as passionate They're about that. They're not as passionate about it, but yeah. it's both equally wrong. Right. And and I tell everybody, I said, if you don't like what's going on in the White House, you should pay attention to what's going on in your governor's mansion because Beto's going to gonna run next time. Yeah. And he came within three points of beating Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. And Ted Cruz did not put three million Texans out of work. Right. That's right. So don't whistle past the graveyard. Don't think that that's a joke because it's not. And and we spoke earlier and I said it's odd to me that anyone would believe that Cornyn would win by eight points in Texas and Trump would win five. by five. Yeah. So there's at least three points worth of corruption in our voting system in Texas. Yes. And what's that magic number? Cruz and Beto. That's three, three points. Three points. You're at, that's a really interesting point. I, I I never put those two together, but that's, wow. They were kind of testing the waters here this this election, weren't they? I think so. I think so. And this, yeah, I the whole idea that you're going to support a, a candidate because he's got an R next to his name, no matter how bad they are, right. is, is repugnant to me as an American. Right. Um, well, so all right. Well, let, okay. Yes. This this may be a, a good point of of maybe we agree, maybe we don't agree. Mm -hmm. So you know, my my position has always been that we fight the conservative fight in the party mm -hmm. at during the primary. Once yes. the primary is over, because we've lost we lost, and I showed this on election night where we lost. I think four. Uh, um, judge uh, benches, mm -hmm. uh, four, four judges uh, races right here in the Rockwall County, uh, Dow greater Dallas area, four <laughs> benches because libertarians took just 3% of right. those. Of those. There you that, go, that magic 3% again. There you go. And so, so you know, once we're through that primary, I'm, I'm one of those guys. And man, I, it, it, you ask anyone in Rockwall, I go after our the, the, the people who are rhinos. Mm -hmm. But once once the, the, we've gotten through the primary, I support the rhinos mm -hmm. over over the Democrats. Yeah, yeah, that's that's our you know I'm a Republican too. So You're a precinct chair a precinct as well. Chair, yes, yeah. right. And that's normally my take. Mm -hmm. There are times though when those candidates are just so bad they've they've either trampled the Constitution, refused to live up to their promises. Mm -hmm. They're just such bad candidates. I cannot support that candidate. But what do you do? I, you either don't vote, which me and my wife have done on several occasions. Mm -hmm. We leave that race blank. I can't vote for this Democrat. He's 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 a wacko. Right. I can't vote for this Republican because this is not a Republican. Mm -hmm. um, and and they've done bad things. And it's almost like if you, you caught a Republican candidate committing an actual crime the day before the election, mm -hmm. are you more of a citizen who's going to turn that? criminal in or are you more Republican who's going to keep their mouth quiet, cover it up and vote for that person anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's where your, your, where your loyalties, my yeah. loyalties are to this country. Well, absolutely. First and foremost, absolutely over the party. Yeah. Um, I, I, I joined the Republican party cause I agree with most of the Republican principles based on the platform, based on the platform. You and me both. Yes. But our elected representatives ignore the platform. Right. That is exactly right. So who are we voting for? Uh, they're putting Democrats in charge of committees down in Austin. We didn't elect what? you to put Democrats in charge of committees down in Austin because they're being nonpartisan. Jeez, no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, you did, that's, did, that, that's, that's I did weird. not know. I knew we had a Democrat uh, speaker of the House, basically. A, 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 a well, I say Democrat. I say Rhino. I consider them the same thing. Well, the, the Democrats come up there with fifty votes, right. All at once. That's a third, right. And, and find a Republican that they think will work with them and say, hey, we'll give you these 50 votes. And all you have to get is another handful of votes and you can be the second most powerful person in Texas. Yeah. And for 20 years, that's been going on. And for 20 years, our speakers have said, OK, I'll do that. Yep. I'll sell out. Yep. And then once they become speaker, they make the assignments and they put these Democrats in charge of committees. And if they get a hard bill that they really don't want to see, they hand it to that committee 
oh, the Democrats killed it. My hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. Exactly. We yeah. only have two thirds majority. Yeah. What can we do? And it, it, what's interesting is you said uh, second most powerful position, mm -hmm. uh, and, but the first most powerful position, as we talked about before the show, is not governor. No, uh, we we have a very weak form of a governor. Uh, his powers are limited to some pardons. Uh, he can call a special session, which is his only emergency power. And uh, that's about it. Uh, uh, who was it a few years back? We tried to fire some some people for taking a junket over to France for a trade deal. Yeah. And she found out she couldn't fire anybody as governor of Texas. And Ann Richards, oh, we need to switch to a cabinet form of government. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 no. This has worked fine for us. Yeah. We have a weak governor and then all the other powers are spread out among so many people that nobody can possibly uh, take it, take advantage of it. Yeah. Until last year. So uh, let's, uh, uh, you know, I, I, we had talked about how I, where I wanted to go with this, with this interview. I first wanted to start about uh, the five-star plan, what, what people can do, but let's, I, I think I'd like to go back Let, let's go backward and okay. what we talked about and cause, because we're already on the subject of governor and, and the COVID issue. And, and obviously we, you and I both agree that Greg, Greg Abbott has been a tremendously conservative governor until the COVID pandemic came up. And that's when things kind of, the wheels fell off. Exactly. And, and I've heard people in the know say, well, he's, he's always been that way. It's just now his colors are showing. And I and I, and see, I have a hard time believing I, that. I, I have a hard time too because yeah. I voted for the man over and over and over yeah. again. And I told my wife, "Yes, this is the person," you know. And and then this hit, and I was just dumbfounded. Yeah. In fact, I, I had a meeting that night to go talk to Cass County uh, Executive Committee, hmm. and yeah, the plan just went completely off the rails. A uh, couple of those people I had met with them and their families. And two of them had sons that were completely apolitical, didn't mm. want anything to do with it, had lost all hope. But by the end of the meetings, they're like, wait a minute, that's a good guy. Maybe not all is lost. I mm. gave him a little bit of hope. And then this came out. So I told, I told both of them, look, I apologize to both of you for giving your kids hope. Because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's I did not unusual. See this coming? No, I don't think a lot of us saw saw it coming. And and obviously, um, this. So so let, you you say that the governor doesn't have a lot of power, but he did have the power to uh, to shut some things down. He violated uh, almost half of our bill of rights, and and I've got that list somewhere, and it's on the website. It's it's in the book, and people are constantly. Uh, E emailing me or talking to me saying, hey, you forgot about uh, Article 1, Section 2, a Republican form of government, not a monarchy. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you put that in your list? Or why didn't you put in, you know, this, this violation, that violation? But freedom of religion, uh, no imprisonment without due process, underneath, you know, underneath the label quarantine, a lot of people were put under house arrest. Yes. For, for having the wrong kind of job. Uh, equal treatment under the law. He woke up one day and said, you're an essential worker and you're not an essential worker. Well, that's treating people differently under the law. Uh, making laws uh, and getting involved in judicial cases. When um, when Shelley Luther was going to be you know, put in jail and she's put in jail, the governor called up the judge and said, oh, well, you got to you got to treat her this way. You've got to. Well, that's not his job. He's not in a judicial branch. Right. And Article 2 of our Constitution is one paragraph, and it says the governor will do executive things, judges will do judge things, and the legislators will make the law, and mm. nobody or no collection of people will do those other functions outside of this document. Mm -hmm. So to me, the Emergency Powers Act itself, when it was passed in 75, is unconstitutional. It gives the governor power that the Constitution doesn't give him. Right, right. And you can no more hand him power that the Constitution doesn't hand him than you can take power away that the Constitution gives him. Yeah. Now, this was all, you know, it's for emergencies, it's for hurricanes, it's going to last a week or so, it's going to be all over. But when this happened, our legislators didn't stand up and do anything about it. Very few of them. Very I think few. Maybe five of them uh, did something about it. Right. Or and, tried to. Or tried to. Right. And it's still in court. It's an act of futility at this, uh, the, way, the way this laid out. Right. Right. And, so 
yeah, I, I first I got mad at the governor, and then I said, I, you know, everybody phone their state reps, and then once you got your state rep on the phone, I'm mad at a whole other group of people for not doing their job and maintaining their oath. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we've got maybe fifty people across the state of Texas now looking at a run for uh, state representative in the primaries. I, I hope we can get a hundred, hundred and forty people to run against the incumbents. Well, you know that would be that that would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? Um, and you know, one of the things that that if you looking on your website, which uh, this is a, a a screenshot of your website, you know, you you have a blog basically focusing on uh, Abbott's unconstitutional mandates, um, and it, you go through this uh, one to ten, and it really does give a a, a good. Under, help people understand what exactly uh, happened here and why uh, so many conservatives are, are, are and, and frankly, every every Republican should be outraged over this. Every citizen. Every citizen. Uh, uh, not point. just Republicans. Right. Uh, we don't want to see someone in beta, uh, like Beto or Rourke being sitting in the governor's mansion in two years <laughs> with the, this permission. And this is a quote by Dan Patrick, and I that basically the governor can do whatever he wants. And that was just quoted in Texas, I believe Texas Monthly, their last issue that they put out. And I don't think he meant that in the phrases, I'm giving you permission. I think it was kind of out of frustration. But still, no, you can't do whatever you want as governor. That's why we have a constitutional form, a Republican form of government. Yes. To curtail that so we don't get someone... Uh, say Beto or works yells emergency and says I can do whatever I want. Right, well, you can't. Right. Well, and so in, in your you know on your website in your book, mm-hmm. the w- what you would like to see is a censure of of Governor Abbott. That's uh, so talk a little bit about what that means. Okay, um, I think last time on the show I was telling you the example was if you're Catholic and you don't agree with anything the Catholic Church does or you disagree with certain tenets. Well, the church has a system of saying you're no longer a Catholic. So censure, which is different from censor, right? And nobody likes censorship, but a censure is a formal, you did bad to an elected official, normally it's an elected official, by their own party, saying you've diverged from our principles. Free market does not include shutting down businesses and That's creating right. um, virtual monopolies for big box stores right. while you shut everybody else down. Right. That's not a Republican principle. Republican principle is definitely not shutting down churches. It's not putting people under house arrest and calling it a quarantine. It's not. (laughs) Right. These are not Republican principles. These are things you'd expect from Mao or Stalin or Lenin or Castro. And people get upset when I put Abbott's name in that list. Mm -hmm. I I didn't put his name in that list. He did. Right. Now argue with me. Are you a constitutional conservative or are you a monarchist? Exactly. You can't protect the Constitution and Greg Abbott at the same time. It's not personal. It's not political. He did something. It's wrong. Now, I don't understand why if I violate somebody's civil rights, I go to jail. But if he can violate 36 million people's civil rights, and his worst punishment is his show, poor showing at CPAC. Well, and that's, that's why Thomas Jefferson said that when the... Uh, government fears the people, there's liberty. When the people fear government, there's tyranny. And that is what we've experienced over the last year in, with all these shutdowns is, is literal tyranny. I've seen the look in people's faces when government comes and shuts their business down. Mm-hmm. I've got an article about a little uh, a crawfish shack in uh, Wascom, Texas. At 6.30 at night, we're having dinner and the fire marshal shows up and shuts everything down on a Friday and she's got thousands of dollars worth of crawfish, and that stuff don't keep well. Hmm. And the look on her face is something I'd never want to see on an American's face. There's my business. There's my money. There's my, for what? You hmm. said I had 30 days to comply. Nope. And then all of a sudden, there's six sheriffs, you know, or six government vehicles out front because she got nervous because the crowd was not happy. You're interrupting right. our dinner. And we've already put up with an ice storm. We've already put up with COVID. Now you're messing with us? It's bad enough we have somebody in the White House doing it, somebody in the governor's mansion doing it, you know, way too many county judges taking that power, and now it's trickled down to the minions, and you think you you run things? Yeah. And I thought we were within an, a hair's breadth of another Boston, Boston massacre because there were people exchanging words, and it was hard to calm them down. Mm-hmm. So... 
that sort of thing boils over. Excuse the pun when we're talking about crawfish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that things those, those things boil over. Yeah. It and does. people are frustrated. Mm-hmm. There are Democrats upset that their party isn't saying bad things about Greg Abbott right now. Mm. Because it's an opportunity. It's well, the Democratic Party looks at it. We're going to save that bullet for later. Right. And I guess you're right. Yeah. And our party is going to go, well, we're not going to do anything about it because it gives the party a black eye. Well, if you're not going to protect us and you're not going to protect my rights, who's left? Right. Well, that's just me, me and you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's where the power actually is. You know, it's interesting. So we're in the middle of the legislative session and a lot of our legislative priorities uh, have been actually uh, followed up with, which I'm very proud of. Again, I cannot say enough about Senator Hall. Um, he He's taken our legislative priorities Four, by the way, four of the, you know, I'm sorry, three of the legislative priorities that uh, the that the delegates from the state of Texas adopted, three of them were, uh, were platform positions that I've that I put forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of that. One of those is constitutional carry. And we have, uh, it looks as though it's a, that it, that it could could pass. Greg, Governor Abbott has already made it very clear that he is looking forward to signing it and he's supporting it. Mm -hmm. But where I got surprised was that our Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick, uh, it, it has not supported it. And uh, it's, it, it, as a, you know, I've always looked at Dan Patrick as a conservative. So it's just taken me back uh, a little bit and, and, and made me rethink kind of what we're, what we're seeing from our, from our leaders. Well, I think this goes along with what I say in the five star plan about constitutional, um, constitutional carry is one of those things, but generally term limits. Yes. Um, we we elect really good people, <laughs> and that's another one of my platform well, positions. But go we, ahead, yes. We elect really good people, and we send them into Congress, or we send them to the Senate, or, or you know, exactly. we send them to Austin, and they are lions. They are real people who know the difference between right and wrong. Yep. And 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 thank God, Senator Hall's only promise he's ever made is to get on his knees and ask God for guidance every day, mm-hmm. and that's worked. I don't know what anybody else's system is, but they should adopt that one. <laughs> I agree. Because that's a beautiful system and it, it works. Yes. And he has three check marks. Does it help the people? Is it, you know, it, it does it is it constitutional? Is is this the right thing to do? And if it's not, then he votes against it. If it is, he votes for it. And that's a beautiful system. I wish we all did it. It sounds common sense. But the problem is so many people get down there and they start to moderate. They go from being a rock rib yes. conservative. Yes. Oh well, I'll 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 give you this if you'll give me that so I can be effective. And they wind up not getting anything done except maybe naming some roads and naming some bridges and you know, and then going back and bragging about how conservative they are and how mm. effective they are and how many laws they got passed. I don't care about any of that. I care about are we moving in the right direction or not. You know, as a conservative, it's always bothered me when the uh, members of Congress come home to bring home the bacon, so to speak, mm. that here's all of the money that we're getting. And I, I, I've never understood that because I've always thought if, if you're a conservative, shouldn't you be coming back and saying, look how much money I've saved, your tax dollars, that we're, we're not going out and spending it, we are actually saving it. So it's, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive to me. Well, the death of every republic has been the treasury. Yes. Um, and when everybody else is is grabbing their piece of the pie, if your guy doesn't grab your share, then well, he's not a good guy for right. you. Right. So everybody else is a th- thief, but my guy brings home the bacon. <laughs> and that's why you get a 3% approval rating for Congress, but a 98% re-election rate. Yes. If you're stealing from me, you're my guy. If you're stealing from me, you're, you're, you're evil. Well, you can't have a whole country stealing from each other. Right. And, and that's the problem. Um, I, I grew up in a in a district in Lufkin, Texas, in an era where if you wanted to see a Republican, you had to pay a dollar, go to the fair and look in a jar because <laughs> there were no Republicans. Yeah. They yeah. just weren't. They didn't yeah. exist in Texas. We, yeah. we were Democrat. Right. And I had a Democrat uh, uh, congressman and his name was Charles Wilson. Huh. And he was, if you ever saw Charlie Wilson's of course, war, yeah, of course, very yes. accurate. Yes. He was, a, he was a wild man. Yeah. But he voted very conservative, more conservative than most Republicans. Yeah. And his, his famous quote was, I live in a district and they don't want anything. I get to vote yes a lot. Mm. So I have a lot of favors and I can call them in. Mm. And we were East Texas. We, we don't want anything we don't earn. And, and 
don't take from me and give to somebody that didn't work. And don't yes. give me anything that belongs to somebody else because that's I'm I'm receiving stolen merchandise. Yes. And that's not just the politicians have changed, it's the voters have changed. Uh, without question, without question. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're seeing, I think, a uh, Texas turning purple with yes, with the I influx know. of people from California and uh, in the left coast. And uh, it, it, it is surprising to me that they, they, they come here for, the, you know, for all of the great low tax mm -hmm. rate and all of the opportunities. And they just don't seem to catch that. There's a reason for it, and well, well, I've got <laughs> go ahead. I've got a counterpart to that. All right, good. If good. you if you look at the election returns of people who were registered in Texas two or three years, you'll see a much greater uh, registration among Republicans than you will among Democrats. Uh, I I I tend to think, and I've spoken to a lot of Californians, some of them very very wealthy, and and actually they were Bernie so. Bernie Sanders supporters at one time, and now they're not. Yeah. And uh, Joe Rogan is a good example of that. Okay. He got a $100 million podcast deal, okay? Yes. And he's living in California. He loves California. He was, he loves yeah. Joe. He, he, he <laughs> loves Bernie Sanders, and he is a socialist to the day he is along, you know? He gets a $100 million contract, and his money people explain to him to inhale and exhale in California is going to cost you $12 million a year in income tax. And he was like, uh, Texas? Texas sounds good. I could put up with Texas. And one of his first things he said when he got here, he's like, I'm going to find a guy who was born here who votes conservative, and he, he's going to tell me how to vote because I like what you have and I don't want it to change. So that's a flip. That's a huge flip. My sister, uh, bless her soul, she was our token Democrat holdout <laughs> in the family. She recently read the book. She loves the book. She's promoting the book. That's good. And she's talking about concealed carry. Yeah. And and my wife is like, did she become a Republican? I'm like, shh, you'll scare her <laughs> off. You'll scare her off. But she's conservative in the old, you know, the old version of Texas where we had conservative Democrats. So, yes, yeah, she believes in the Second Amendment. She believes in the First Amendment. She believes in going to her church and not having them shut down. She believes in all of those things. Yeah. But who, who does she vote for? Okay, so <laughs> here, so, so it's interesting because I agree. I think that a lot of the people are coming over and they're coming over as Republicans. The problem is that that to me is the fundamental problem that they come in to be Republicans. For instance, here in Rockwall, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we voted 78%, I think, uh, for, for Donald Trump. Well, four years ago, it was 93%. And uh, we're overwhelmingly Republican. And, and people vote overwhelmingly in the Republican primary. And, and so, you know, it's interesting. We're having a conversation about how to take back the GOP. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we have so many of those rhinos, Republicans mm -hmm. name only, in our party, who basically are, are, are watering down our platform, our positions, and are supporting the kind of candidates that you and I are trying to get out of office. So while on one hand, yeah, it's a good thing that, yeah, we've got the Republicans, mm -hmm. but remember we held the, we held the house Senate and the white house for six of George W. Bush's eight years. Mm -hmm. And did we shrink the size of government? Did we lower the debt? Did we do anything that, that reflects our, our, our conservative values? I don't think so. So I don't think the, the, the answer is Republicans, obviously. obviously. Yeah, I think the, the thing that just hit my mind was when you go to a ball game, okay? Yep. This is Texas. That's the second religion here in Texas, right? <laughs> That's you right. You go to a football game. It doesn't matter if the team has 80 people on the team. There's only 12 on the field at a time. Yeah. So I don't care how big we build our Republican team. Who are our 12 players who are conservative? Right. Unfortunately, a Republican stands for relevant in Texas. The Democrats have adopted the R. Mm. They've joined the party. Mm. They haven't changed their concepts, but they just want to be elected. Yeah. Yes, I'm a conservative. You know? Well, and so let's, uh, that gets us back. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit at, uh, before the show about Alan West, mm -hmm. uh, our, 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 our new party chairman, who, who I just, I, I'm just amazed how how great of a leader he has been. He, he has surpassed my expectations. I knew he was conservative, but what I love about what he's doing is he is really helping people understand what it means to be a Republican, what it means mm -hmm. to be a conservative, not just a Republican, but a conservative Republican. So, you know, one of the things that people are wondering is, is he going to run for governor? And yeah. I mean, we, so, some are excited about it. Some are not. Where, where are you on that? My guess is he probably will throw his hat in a ring. Really? And I, I really do think that I just, 
it's just my gut feeling. He hasn't said anything to me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But it, it, to me, I would rather a person who asks for a job finish that job first mm -hmm. and then consider another job. So uh, if that were the case, he wouldn't have finished out uh, being Republican state chair, which he's doing a great job at. Yes. And we, we voted for him. We both voted in the yes, same we SD. Yes, we My did. My wife voted for him. Yep. And he won our SD by two votes. Yes. I never failed to remind him. Those were me and my wife. <laughs> I gave that job. Okay, well, I was but, one of them too. Yeah, you so. were one of them. Yeah, too. all right. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I think he's doing a great job, mm -hmm. and I look forward to seeing him in the future staying involved in Texas politics. He wants to move up. God bless him. Finish this job first. Yeah. Well, I think it, it, to me, so I, I, I'm kind of on the same page for a different, totally different reason. Mm -hmm. It's not, to, and I don't have a problem with people jumping from one uh, position to another when the opportunity is there, because I, I frankly, I, I wish. You know, Leo Berman was a candidate of mine. Uh, he was a East Texas um, uh, member of the House, state house, and uh, we got him elected. And he beat Ted Camel, but uh, he, you know, I, I thought he could beat Ralph Hall. I, I really did, and, and I believe that he would have beaten Ralph Hall had he run. But uh, when when we talked about it, he said, uh, "No, I I know Ralph Hall. He's a friend of mine," mm -hmm. and I hate that. I hate hearing people say, "Well, they're a friend." Yeah. Uh, th that's not what politics. Sh you know, it, it should be about you know what's right and what's wrong. But when we talk about Alan West, I look at him and I say, I, the reason I would not want to see him as governor is for the same reason we just talked about. The governor's position is not a very strong, strong seat to begin with. Is not if you follow the rules. Not if you follow the rules. And number two, his, his, his power, his influence on those within the party and those who are who are looking from the outside in is so extraordinary. It is so refreshing to have someone who is such a great spokesman for the party. And I would hate to see him. I'd hate to, I'd hate to, to lose that voice. I can agree with you on that. Yeah. Definitely. So, you know, we, we talk a little bit about all of these things, but bottom line, the five-star plan is really about, uh, but you know what? Before we before we go there, I want to I want to highlight one thing that I that I shared on another show, and that is the words of Alexander Fraser Titler, who says that a democracy cannot exist as a permanent form of government. It can only exist until the voters discover that they can vote themselves largesse from the public treasury. From that moment on, the majority always votes for the candidates promising the most benefit from the public treasury, with the result that a democracy always collapses over loose. Fiscal policy always followed by a dictatorship. And it really kind of speaks to what you and I have been talking about, what you talked about, mm -hmm. uh, specifically about, you know, people are just electing people who are going to, you know, become Santa Claus to them, basically. Well, Thomas, Thomas Sowell said, an yes. honest politician is wholly inadequate for people who want the impossible. Boy, <laughs> those are great words. So if you go out and tell the truth, you won't get elected. Yeah. In, in many cases. Yeah. And that's, that's a problem. And, and people don't recognize that. So you've got young people who want free college. I talked to young people, a whole crowd of young people. They all wanted free college. I'm not for free college. I'm not either. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, as soon as I'm done paying off my free high school education, I'll pay for your free college. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden it hit their head. Wait a minute. Free college, I would never, never actually pay off free college because I'd pay for the next person and the next person exactly. and the next person from now on. Exactly. But if I take a loan, I can pay it off and I'll be done with it. Exactly. And at the end of the evening, there was hardly anybody there that wanted free college. Right. And it's, and, it's and it, free. And it's right. It's a value. You see value in it when you pay, when you have to yes. pay for it, when you got skin in the game. I had, I had an actual state rep in Texas and I will not name names. Okay. I'm sure he'll remember when he sees this. Okay. But he contacted me. He says, I got the solution. Actually, he contacted me on Facebook publicly and said, I got the solution. We're just going to freeze the cost of college, and that's going to make it more affordable. And I said, really? So no raises. Utilities are going to stay the same. Textbooks prices aren't going to increase. Pens, papers, staples, they're all going to stay exactly the same. Well, no. So you're subsidizing it. Yeah. Uh, no, we're freezing the cost. No, you're not freezing the cost. Yeah. You're taking my money and artificially making the price stay the same, which yeah. is partially free college. Yeah, that's, oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. So you're not talking about state funded, I mean, state funded colleges. I mean, the, the, the cost of, of, of education today is just out of, out of control. So it, it is, it is. And one of those is the ease of loans for it. Yeah. When, when you uh, dump a pile full of money into the marketplace and say, hey, here's all this 
free money. Cheap or free tr- money. Tr- yeah, cheap money. I, cheap yeah. money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then the price is going to go up because yeah. there's only so many colleges and so many seats. And the college is like, hey, we've got 10,000 applicants for 1,000 seats. What if we double the price? Oh, now we only have 3,000 applicants. What if we double the price again? Hmm. There's no downside for them. Yeah. So the price goes up. Yeah. So the five star plan. When we talk about when when people get this book, mm-hmm. what are they going to find in it, and how how is it going to help them? I've had people who have run for high office tell me that it just removes the excuse of ignorance. Hmm. You you will find out what a precinct chair is. You will find out what a county chair is. You will find out what they do and what they don't do. And and people get this confused all the time. They they. They look at everything as a national issue. They, they look at D.C. when they have less influence on your life than, than your city council does. Mm. They, they don't realize there's a difference. They don't re- realize that the state can't order the cities to have a special response team for child abductions. That's not how it works. You right. know, that's your governor. You know, your, your governor runs your state police. Your, your, your mayor, if you depend on your former city government, runs your police department. And those things are local issues, and they should be. Mm. The more local, the better. But they're going to learn how to get involved and what they can do besides voting. They, they can run for precinct chair. That deadline this year is coming up in September. Mm. Uh, half, the county, uh, half, the, half the counties across Texas, half those precinct chairs are empty. Yeah. And the ones that are filled... Not all of them are filled with conservatives. No, they're not. <laughs> that R does not stand for conservative. That no, it R doesn't. stands for relevance. Right. And and a lot of these precinct chairs are held for an activity. They like to go to the events. They like to go to the rallies. They like the position, but they don't accomplish much. Right. And and I focus more on accomplishments. And most people focus more on accomplishments. You know, I think the the best way to determine whether or not you're your executive committee, which is the group of precinct chairs, that's mm-hmm. what they're called in, in the party, that uh, those those precinct chairs get together and they make decisions for the county party, for instance. And it, the best way, in my opinion, to determine whether or not you're, you've got an executive committee that is conservative is have they signed on with a five-star plan uh, to censure Abbott? Exactly. Oh, last time we spoke, we, we'd gone from six counties to nine counties. Wow. Uh, now we're standing at 14 wow. with more on the way. People are slowly moving in that direction. The wheels turn slow, but they do sl- they, they do turn. I don't know if anything's happened in Rockwall. Uh, that's, that's Nothing that's has your- happened in Rockwall. Okay. And that's, and, and I, I'm just, I'm, I, I said all of that to. Yes, to, to say this. <laughs> go ahead. Because okay. I do think it's important to ask, why hasn't why? Rockwall Executive Committee uh, either addressed this issue or signed on. Okay, so people that are wondering the same thing you are, and I'll tell you this, you yeah. know your precinct chair. Yep. Okay, ask your precinct chair. Well, I I, 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 I know my precinct chair is a, is, is a rhino. Okay. Okay, so we, we need, I, I know other precinct chairs, so yes, yes. I will talk to them. For so sure. everybody watching this mm-hmm. can find out who your precinct chair is or if that precinct chair's position is filled mm-hmm. by contacting your county clerk and asking. And when you contact that precinct chair, and they only represent about 510 registered voters, so it's not like they're, they're overwhelmed. They meet about four times a year, about an hour each, unless there's a special event. Yeah. But um, find out why that they support Greg Abbott over the Constitution. Find mm-hmm. out why they didn't protect your uh, your rights for eight months, mm-hmm. and they're not doing it now. Because those those emergency orders haven't gone away. They've been modified. Yeah. And as soon as they modified them, Democrats started looking for a way to get that power back. Yeah. Um, they said, oh, if the, the, if the ICU beds ever get over 15%, then all of these rules and all of these mask mandates and all of these business shutdowns can come back. Mm to these county judges. Hmm. Gosh. So county judges jumped on the phone and called the hospitals and said, how do you make that count? Are those beds plugged in when you're not using them? Hmm. So you don't really have that many ICU beds. Hmm. And the, there's no legal way to enforce being that number being correct. Right, right. Well, so so being a precinct chair is to me one of the, one of the, a great way to get, get started and get active. Yes. And, uh, and you can, and, and so, 
it, it, a lot of people don't understand that it is an elected position. Mm -hmm. You would actually be on the ballot if you were unopposed or if you or were if opposed, opposed, excuse yes. me. And, uh, and, and the, I think the first place to start is to talk with and find out if you have a precinct chair, sit down and talk with them. Would you agree with that? And, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, if they're really conservative yeah. and they're, they're trying and they're doing, yes. they're doing everything, that's yes. fine. Support them 100%. Yes. Uh, I ask everybody just to go one step further. You know, the five star plan, there's a lot of things in there. Yes, but you I do. ask you every everybody just go one step further than you normally go. You are registered voter. Yep. That's great. That's great. Now yep. go vote. Yes. You you vote in every election. That's great. Sign right. up and run. Right. But you also find you find five, five more people. Five more people. I and, love that. And, and and that's happening. I've got people coming back in their seventies. Yes. And and they were hard sales. <laughs> But they came back to me and they said, you know what, this, this thing could work. I yeah. haven't had hope in a long time. I've registered to vote. I can't vote in this election, but I'll be able to vote in the next election. Yeah. But uh, um, I've registered to vote again for the first time in years, and I need to buy five more books yeah. because I want to recruit five people into this and get them to recruit five people into this and build this. I, I've, I just had a, a, a mayoral candidate the other day say, hey, can I form a five-star group in my county? Like you are a private citizen, you can do whatever you want. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but that's not my goal. My goal is not to start an organization. Yeah. Uh, because an organization already exists. The yes. question is, how do we get that organization actually moving and doing something exactly. that you makes could, a difference? You've got to get the voters. I, I start every speech to uh, high school students. If I, get, I get into a classroom and I say, how many people here show of hands is 18 or turning 18 next year? Congratulations. You've now become the most powerful people in the history of the world. U.S. citizens. It's not the president of the United States. He works for you once <laughs> yeah. you turn 18. Yeah. You remind him he's a servant and remind him that you're the public. Mm -hmm. And that's at every level of government. Yeah. And too many people on both sides of the equation have forgotten that balance of power. And it's time to remind a lot of them. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I agree. And and uh, so one of the things that uh, concern me and, and, and I think the hardest part about this, you know, uh, it, it, you know, I've I've tried to recruit candidates before. <laughs> it's tough. It is very difficult because conservatives, frankly, are uh, the reason we're conservative is because we want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. We don't like government in our business and we just want to live our lives. Socialists are much more social than we are. They yes. are. <laughs> That's why they have so many candidates standing in line to, to, to run. And so when you are a, a conservative, it is, it is hard to kind of say, well, I want to get in the public fray. I want to, I want to, you know, as conservatives, we get our, our uh, head beat in sometime. A lot of times. And, and people are, the other thing about conservatives, uh, a lot of times, if you're truly conservative, you're humble. Yeah, you're humble before That's good God. Point. You're humble before your family, before your groups, and I'll, I'll do you know I'll do my part, but certainly there's got to be somebody more qualified, and a lot of times there's not. Yeah. So if you ever look at your state rep or your state senator, and, and I'm focusing mostly on state for the next two years, so we don't have a dog in a fight in D.C. right now, right. which is great. We right. can focus on cleaning up our backyard. Yeah. But if you look at how they vote and go, I wouldn't have voted that way. Mm -hmm. I would have done a better job. Then you're more qualified mm -hmm. than the person that holds that job. You should put your name on the dotted line and run. And convince other people you're more qualified for that job. You know what I think is great. Again, I go back to Alan West, and, and the and the state party has done a magnificent job of keeping us informed about what's happening with our legislative priorities, for mm -hmm. instance. And they're not afraid to say, "Hey, we have some <laughs> Republicans here." Uh, this was, by the way, this has never happened. I, I have. I have been a, a, a Republican since turn. I mean, I've, I've voted Republican since turning eighteen. Never missed, mm -hmm. never missed an election. I've never missed a, a state a, a state convention. Uh, I've been a delegate to every state convention since turning eighteen, and I can. And so I've been a very active Republican. I have never, never once seen the state party actually send out information saying, by the way, the lieutenant governor doesn't support this. <laughs> by the way, these these state reps, these state senators don't support this because it's always there's always been this mindset about the state party that you if they got an R next to their name, we got to support and support and support them. Alan West is crazy because he actually thinks, wait a minute, if you're going to call yourself a Republican, then you darn well better act like a Republican. Mm -hmm. We have we have rules, and they're not following them. And when you don't follow them, you sh 
you should pack up your bags and go to a party that doesn't have the rules. Absolutely. You don't agree with what we, we think. And, and Brian Slate, and I've talked to Brian Slate on several yeah, pages. We wind guy. up, great guy. He's yes. a representative uh, for Hunt County and yes. a couple others. But uh, um, his thing is when he stood up and said, hey, we've got these nine legislative priorities that the delegates voted on. Why don't we use these? as a Because there's a meeting. What are our legislative priorities as, as elected Republicans? So he stood up and he goes, well, what about these nine? And they laughed out loud at him. It Unbelievable. Was and my wife is out there and she is hopping mad because Man. we had to jump on the phone and we had to pressure our elected Republicans to do the right thing with constitutional carry, kicking and screaming. It's like it was, it's not enough that we voted you in and donated money. It's not enough we were delegates and had to stay up all hours of the day and night to get this thing passed. We, we told you what we wanted yes. overwhelmingly. Yes. And now we have to get on the phone or drive to Austin again? Yeah. Why do we have you there? I'll run next time. I'll, you know, we'll find somebody else to replace you. So I got a life. I, this is your job. Do what we hired you to do. Yes. And it's, it's, oh, she's nine times upset. You think I'm outspoken. Don't get her started. <laughs> Carol, your <laughs> Carol, wife. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Carol's wonderful. And she's my people. She, you know, and, and, and so, you know, when we talk, when I talk about what the state party is doing, it is very easy to get on that mailing list, email mm -hmm. list. And so I would encourage anyone who is not, uh, who is not on that email list to, to, to do that because that is a really, really important, um, uh, thing and way to keep, keep, uh, uh, keep connected, uh, stay connected to what's happening. I mean, we've got, um, you know, state representative, uh, Holland, who is here in, who's, who's here in, uh, Rockwall. Um, I, I, I still, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to, to, to get a, a, a buddy of mine who, who was the kind of the tea party, uh, guy here, who was just a big Ron Holland fan. I mean, he just, he, he I think we spent two, three hours at a state convention one time arguing. I was supporting a guy from Frisco. He's supporting this rock wall kit guy. And, and he was just absolutely convinced. Rod Holland is, is, is just a true conservative. I, I, and, and he had, I, I'm going to invite him to come on the show. I talked to him a little bit about coming on the show. He said he wasn't too sure because frankly, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask him why are you happy with this guy? Because he's, he, he has voted, he's voting, against some of the most fundamental, I mean, uh, taxpayer funded lobbying. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's voting against uh, preventing that from happening. We, 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 we want to stop taxpayer funded lobbying. He wants to support it. Don't use my money to pressure my elected representatives to raise my taxes so you can have more money to do that. For exactly. Next year. That's a waste. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're seeing. And so the, so what, what this five-star plan is trying to do is say, okay, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Okay, then get out and, and, and put your name on the ballot. What's the, what, you know, if, if, if state, you're, you're tired of your state rep, put your name on the ballot. You're exactly. tired of your mayor, you, put your name on the ballot or, or city council. I'm, I'm getting phone calls from all over Texas from Republican groups saying this guy can't go back to Austin again. We got to make sure he doesn't go back <laughs> to Austin. He ha actually has a better rating from liberal organizations mm. than he has from any conservative organizations. Uh, I did a three-part series on the on the web about, hey, is your state rep a rhino? And one of the things, we went back to last session. Mm -hmm. So if your state rep was there, there was a thing called the Chinese drone bill. Uh, oh, yeah. Remember this? I do remember that, yes. Okay, hey, so. Pat Fallon talked to me about that. It, yeah. was, it was, they were all ready to go. They were they, 100, you know, 130 votes or whatever they had lined up. And and a, a gentleman out of uh, uh, Arlington stood up, Tony Tenderhold, uh -huh. and that's one of the five or so that I would let keep their job in Austin if it was up to me personally. Yeah. And Tony Tenderhold said, hey, these Chinese drones, they're made in China. And there's a law in China that says if you make a drone in China, you have to put in a back door for Chinese intelligence Ex to use anytime they want. Yes. I'm like, my God, who would vote for this? Well... <laughs> Ours. After our was, Republicans, <laughs> after it was explained very carefully, and after uh, Congressman Goodman uh, uh, brought in a, uh, a letter saying, "Hey, look, here's our security concerns over this. This is a bad idea." We had 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans voted for it anyway. Yeah. So if you if they're on that list, yeah. After it was explained, that's not stupid. Yeah. That that's that's not good. Right. So. Uh, at day 51, there was a vote in this session for a six-day weekend. 
they had been in session all of 12 hours. 12 Gosh. hours worth of work. You got 140 days. Well, you got to get a bill together. You got to get this. Did nobody tell you the session was coming up? Right. Did you didn't get anything written before you showed up in Austin? So day one, nothing. Day two, day three, day 51, time for a six-day weekend. We've already done 12 hours worth of work. Right. And then they're going to tell you and me that they couldn't get the priorities. Oh, we ran out of time. Right. I wonder why. Right. Well, and, and, and with with a, a chair like Alan West, he's not going to let them leave without. And that's the, I got to tell you, I mean, that's the thing that I think is most remarkable about Chairman West is he does have a national profile. Mm -hmm. And so he has a bigger voice than any of these legislators or the governor or the lieutenant governor ever thought yes. possible. And so yes. now they're going, oh, crud okay let show us that legislative priority list again we better we better do something we got to give them something my wife is upset about uh, how the con uh, constitutional carry bill is going yes because immediately they said well yeah constitutional carry because you're a u.s citizen well unless you're between the ages of yes. 18 and 21 you're only allowed to carry automatic weapons into war for an event that happened before you were born you realize the next people we lose in afghanistan and 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 in Iraq, will have not been born when 9-11 happened. Hmm. They're dying for something in the history books. We've been there for 20 years. Hmm. We can't stay there forever. Right. We spend 10 times as much as China on defense. We spend a billion for a weapons system. They spend a million to bribe somebody to get the plans. Yeah. We're not making out on this deal. Hmm. We're going to spend so much as a country on defense that we won't have anything left to defend. Hmm. There's a reason I don't have a walk-in vault for my twenty dollars that's in my wallet because <laughs> yeah. I can't afford it. Right. So we do that in Texas. We do that as a nation. We this money doesn't mean anything to them. It's not their money. It's right. Ours. No, I, I agree. And uh, so yeah, if if you look at the voting record on these people, they talk a good game, but you look at how they vote, um, and people are. This last year woke a lot of people up. They said, "Hey, why didn't you rein in?" Governor Abbott, we can't do anything while we're out of session. Well, that's a lie. Our Constitution, Rule 665, says you can threaten, you can meet to consider impeachment for the governor. You can call your own special session anytime when he violates the Constitution like this. And then those state reps go, well, yeah, but I didn't have the, no, stop talking. You lied to me when you said you didn't have that power. Now you're going to explain to me why you didn't use the power. Exactly. Exactly. That's so, you so true. Lost all credibility. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, so one of the biggest challenges has always been, okay, so how do I evaluate my state rep and state senator? And I think the state party, again, I go back to Allen West leadership and we're able to actually see a better view of how people are actually doing rather than just depending on great organizations like the NRA or the uh, Christian Coalition or, or American Family Association. You get these Texas scorecard, Texas scorecard, Texas scorecard, the American. Yeah. It, I mean, there's there, there's a litany of, of organizations out there, but they're not comprehensive. Right. So that's the that's the challenge is, is finding a, a, a comprehensive view of that. And hopefully um, uh, our, our state party will actually produce something. I would love to ungag the county chairs. Mm. Right now, they can't comment in the primaries. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't pick one Republican over another Republican. It's party rules. Right. So if you call up a county chair and say, hey, is this guy really a Republican? Has he come to the events? Do you know him? Have you met with him? Has he worked with you? Oh, yeah, he, well, he's a great guy. He block walk with me. He's at every meeting. He donates money to the party. They can't say that if there's another Republican running against them. Right. Now, my county chair said... Oh my God, I'm the one person in the county that you really should ask because this guy running, oh my God, he's, ne I don't know who he is. He's never been involved in anything. He mm. could be anybody from anywhere. And I can't say anything bad about him in public because, well, those are the rules. Yeah. Well, and it, and that's a that's a tricky one, honestly, mm. because, you know, when, when, when I look at a, a party chair, I'd, I look at them to be, when it comes to these elections in a primary, I, I do look for a little impartiality in there. And if they want to know what I believe, then, then we need to sit down and talk. And mm -hmm. and I'd be okay if that were the case, but it, you know, it, it, it's hard to, it, I, I, I just, I look at the, uh, at the primary as our opportunity to yeah, find the, the primary is the one choice that you have yeah. as a Republican team member, yeah. you know, to pick a good person. Yeah. 
And that has to be a good person. That's where we have to start. Are they good people? I don't care how effective they are. I don't care how great they'll do in the election. Right. Is it a good person? Right. And are they, are they, yeah, exactly. I agree. Yes. Yeah. So in, in, you know, I think about this, I hadn't thought about what you had talked about in bringing, you know, letting county uh, chairs actually endorse. And I, and what I guess I worry about on that is, is that they would, you know, the good old boy network is what we are trying to fight hard against here in Rockwall County. It is, it is such is an entrenched group of Republicans and God help us if, 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 well, the great news is the people involved in politics is a very small, almost vanishingly small slice of society. Yeah. Most voters spend about 15 minutes a year thinking about politics and exactly. it's while they're in line. Exactly. And so if you've got people who consider themselves patriots, yeah. They're they're ex-military, they work a job, they've got kids, they got grandkids, and they they don't like the way this direction, you know, the the country's going, the state's going. Exactly. Sign up and run for precinct chair. Absolutely. There's 510 voters you have to impress. Only 50 of them are probably going to show up to vote. Only about 14 or 15 are going to go all the way down to county chair and, or precinct chair and check and plot. I've met precinct chairs. A lot of them run unopposed, but I've met them in contested election that won with seven votes. Mm. Themselves, them, their wives, and five other people voted. Their, their, their opponent got six votes. Yeah. So they won. I... I Got a group of people. Well, you can call them militia if you want. I call them patriots. They're all they're all ex military types, and they banded together. And they when when the freeze hit, they had generators aplenty, and they had their supplies. And hey, it's a long weekend for us. Yeah, you know, it's no big deal. And they yeah. were helping out their neighbors. And I said, "Have you gotten involved in politics at all?" And they're like, "No, no, no. We don't mess with politics." Right. I explained the, how they could do the precinct chair thing, how they could actually take over the Republican party. Hmm. And they did. And they did. Wow. So they filled all those chairs in a County. And now you have all the precinct chairs are true patriots who believe in something bigger than themselves, who were willing to actually put their lives on the line for something bigger than themselves. Hmm. So, yep. They're the next ones up to vote. So it's regular people can do this. I don't know how we've been able to convince people that they don't have a say, <laughs> that they don't have a power, that they're not allowed to run for these positions, that some of these positions don't even exist. Hmm. But they are, if you don't like the way the country's going, what have you done? Yeah. Well, you know, this is the five-star plan, and it's something that I think every every patriot should check out. And if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about the five-star plan, it's thefivestarplan.com. Thefivestarplan.com. Amazon, Books a Million, Barnes & Noble, Walmart, you can go online and get them from any of those places. Uh, actually, we've got a deal where if, if you if you already like the five star plan and you you want to pass out five more, we'll sell you five books for seventy five bucks. You know, you give you a discount, and that's running uh, this month from the five star plan dot com. Because so many people have contacted me and said, "Hey, I need five more books. Can you hmm. work a deal for me?" It's like, sure. You don't have to buy retail if you're going to buy five. So <laughs> that's awesome. But regular people can go to gun shows. They can recruit people to run. I. It's 35 bucks for a table for, in a lot of cases for two days. Hmm. And hey, where are you going to find more Patriots than a gun show? Well, that's true. That's really true. Well, I, I do hope that you take the opportunity to check this book out, especially if you're not sure what to do in, in politics, if you're frustrated. This really, I think, is a book that speaks to those of us who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. What mm -hmm. do we do now? Yes. I mean, there's stuff in here you can do. Tomorrow when you wake up, to exactly. Make a difference. You exactly. don't have to wait to vote. No, you certainly don't. And uh, Robert West is a great patriot. We've had him on the show before, but I, I'm glad that, that that you were able to come back and talk specifically about about what what you put in paper and uh, in, in print. And as I said before, this is a book that is practical. It's not a bunch of philosophical mumbo jumbo. It is a, it is a, a great primer for those who are who are truly interested in in making a difference in the party and in their nation. And and, and that's what I think is so important about this. So if you haven't uh, checked it out, just go to the five star plan dot com and you'll be able to get more information. Read uh, Robert West's blog. You can 
can purchase the book from the website or as he said from Amazon or, or, or any a number of those uh, locations and I think that uh, it, it's definitely worth your time to actually get involved and to, and to uh, and, and to do something because if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired well then goodness knows you're the one who needs to to to, to be making the difference so i thank robert west for being a part of this show today and i and i look forward to having him back on the show next time i hope that uh, i hope that you will not forget to uh, vote that is coming up uh, tomorrow may 1st that is uh, the, our local elections and i've got to tell you i've already heard about turnout numbers and they are abysmal they are worse, actually, than they've been in a long time, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I suspect they're going to be even worse than, than, than that. So very few people are going to make a decision about who gets to represent them uh, in their state, uh, in, excuse me, in their uh, local uh, city councils and on the school board, so make sure that you get out and vote. Uh, so until next time, I'm Bunker Bob Steinhagen, and I look forward to seeing you then. Blessings. <laughs>